Hey guys, and welcome back to Do News. I'm your host, the King of Do. Got some ICO information lined up for you today. Um, not a lot happening in the news. Uh, the market's down yet again. Uh, had a nice little small rally yesterday, trying to recover, uh, but the pressure is just not there, and uh, a lot of the alts are taking massive hits uh, right now. So, uh, Bitcoin not doing too bad, though. Uh, you know, for something as volatile as Bitcoin, down about 100 bucks, um, and that's not too bad. It keeps bouncing around 2,500 USD to 2,600 USD. Um, so we'll see how long the bouncing happens. Seems like it might be consolidating potentially for a massive break up or a massive break down. But we'll just have to wait and see. But let's get right to it. InsureX. InsureX is a pretty cool little ICO. Um, you guys have about one day and ten hours from the filming of this to essentially uh, check out the crowd sale on InsureX. Uh, there's going to be a nice little bonus uh, for signing up early. And um, super unfortunate that the uh, United States is, of course, restricted. Uh, this is starting to get uh, really old really fast. Uh, all of the good ICOs, it's almost like if it's legitimate <laughs> or it appears to be legitimate or if it's something I'm actually interested in, um, doesn't look like it's even something I can consider um, so uh, I'm taking a look at this one since half my audience uh, is not in the United States, surprisingly enough. Um, so I take a look at this one, and I really, really like it. I like it a lot, guys. I like what I see uh, with InsureX. Um, so if you've been considering it, um, you know, make your own investment decisions, but I would validate that decision for you. Um, I'd give you a nice high five. Uh, buy some for me because um, I can't get any clearly um, but anyhow essentially insurance is working to um, disrupt the insurance world which would be fantastic uh, the amount of things that are done via paperwork are out of control not to mention um, insurance companies uh, still act like it's 1970 I actually filed the claim this year um, and it took six months to go through all the BS just to get $300. A check for $300, guys. Took me six months to get it. And, um, you know, they sent it out, and it never showed up. Guys, I, I literally... <laughs> it was sent to my old address... Guys, I filed a claim because my house got broken into for my new home and my new address. And they literally sent the check to a different home. Trust me. Uh, yes, attorneys got involved in a hurry. <laughs> to ensure and guarantee that my house that I live in has actually been insured this whole time. And that they didn't screw up the paperwork and accidentally insure the place I used to live. Anyhow, it's a good example of how desperate the insurance world uh, needs blockchain technology. Um, of course, based on my experience with most insurance companies and the way that they work, um, it's going to be a long, long time before they truly adopt any of this stuff. Um, it's going to remove, I don't know, at least half the jobs in that industry. Um, there will be very, very little paperwork with bl uh, blockchain technology and things like that. Um, and so InsureX excites me because even though it's way too early to be able to say who's going to win and who's going to lose, right? Because there's going to be other insurance um, solutions out there uh, using blockchain technology. There's going to be plenty of them, that's for sure. Um, I'm just glad that, it, you know, someone's out there starting to spread the news. Hopefully, um, a few insurance companies decide to be forward-thinking and start taking a look at this stuff, but um, we'll just have to wait and see. But huge fan of the team at InsureX. I think they're here a little too early, um, but maybe Early Bird gets the worm, and uh, I'm totally rooting for them. Again, uh, I, would, I would love to participate and uh, help you guys out, but I can't. So I really like what I see here. 
uh, definitely took a, take a look yourself at insurex.co. Um, oh, and it is going to be utilizing um, Ethereum smart contract. So if you're curious what it's running on and things like that, it'll be on the Ethereum network. Next, a peculiar ICO. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to get pronounce this shirtly or if the T is silent. Um, it's hard to say. But essentially what this is, is it's a very similar concept of peer-to-peer -peer lending. Maybe you've used a lending club to either get a loan or even um, participate in loaning yourself. If you haven't done it before, it's uh, been around for 10 years now. I think they just celebrated their 10-year anniversary, lending club. And I was a part of that in its very first year, actually. Um, I was actually still in college and just found it fascinating. Uh, the returns were better than anything that I was going to be able to participate in with very little amount of money I had back in college. Um, and so I jumped in right on it. So this is essentially the same thing as Lending Club, if you're familiar. And essentially what it is is that um, you can kind of go on there and request a loan. Anyone can request a loan, and the community will fund it. Um, we'll all say, yeah, we'll do it. And then there's still a middleman. There's still a middleman that basically validates all the information and things like that and takes a percentage. So it, it is a very centralized um but it does have some uh, potential for some decent returns. Um, so go check out Lending Club if you haven't. Not blockchain related, but it'll help you understand what they're doing here uh, with Shirley or Shirtly. <laughs> um, this is a crowd vouching platform. It's the same as crowdfunding. Essentially, you can vouch for somebody. If you need 100 bucks, I'll, I'll spot you 100 bones um, and you pay me back with some nice little coins. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I mean, it's not something to be, you know, overthought or you shouldn't spend too much time thinking about it. Um, I do have some concerns about this when I, when I fly through it um, and was reading about how it's going to work. One of the more peculiar things on this one actually was that they state that you can receive your coins on either the Ethereum network or on Waves. So you get to pick. And I kind of found that fascinating and I'm trying to wrap my brain around it. I can't figure out the incentive for that other than they're just trying to out the gate, be more liquidable, be more tradable. Um, we saw that recently with Wager. Wager just was like, throw it on Waves, you know, let people trade, sweet. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of Waves, to be honest. If you have an ICO or considering uh, your own ICO, it's a beautiful thing to essentially make it, you know, tradable right away. Um, and if there's good heavy trading volume on there, you'll more likely get picked up by some other exchanges. So I'm a huge fan of the Waves platform, I won't lie. Um, it's super easy, intuitive to use, and the plans that they have um, really fascinate me. And uh, I'm really enjoying uh, using Waves even. I'm getting more familiar with it. It's got a long ways to go, but uh, compared to most the uh, blockchain technology I actually get to play with, um, it, it has some signs of hope. So kind of a big fan of Waves, but that's getting off the subject here. Uh, surely um, the ICO starts in just over a day. So back to back, guys, you got two ICOs right there, back to back. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, make sure you do. Um, I haven't looked uh, or ran across, I, I should say. I haven't actually seen anything on this one about restricting um, anyone in the U.S. So um, it's worth checking out. And uh, I could be wrong on that, um, but I did not find it when I went looking for it. So um, if you know, make sure you leave a comment below if you happen to run across that. Uh, next, this one is super fascinating and super sketchy. I'm really excited about this, guys. Um, it's called Press One, okay? And it's got this cool website that when you move the mouse around your screen, um, you know, the celestial stars connect. And uh, that gets me really excited. Um, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, but this 
is an ICO. Listen carefully. This is an ICO designed for EOS. How is that even possible? How is it even possible that somebody's already preparing an ICO this far in advance? Um, it's really astonishing to me, um, and it gets me kind of um, curious about what the true potential of EOS is. Is it bigger than I thought? Is there more information out there for developers to start getting to work on this before it even exists? And uh, I don't know. I don't know. But here's what's fascinating about Press One. After I read through it, I, I kept on having flashes to steam its white paper, essentially, um, and library even. Um, when I flipped through this, things like content systems and de decentralized distribution of the benefits and the behavioral systems, um, basically rewarding the content creators and even rewarding the people who are sharing good content. Um, you know, this grandiose idea that we should control all the content we see. Um, I do have a, a little hesitation on that just because half of the news making it to the front page of Reddit uh, ends up being fake these days. And that's true for many uh, small uh, subreddits as well to where we're letting people vote on stuff to let it be seen and um, it's not really working out so well for the grand scheme of things but that's a whole different uh, political thing that I don't want to talk about or really dive into but I, I always question is is decentralization is there is there ever going to be a way to fix that we'll have to wait and see so um, you know, there's this one's kind of spouting a, a utopia decentralized new world and all of that. Um, and uh, very, very similar stuff to uh, Steam it, such as like a real name registration, you know, make you know, basically measures to make sure that uh, there's not a lot of bots, um, anti spam mechanisms, things like that. But here's the thing the management team, this guy right here. Uh, Zyolia, I, I am not even going to try again. I'm not going to try again to pronounce his name. But what I do know is that he's kind of a big deal um, in, uh, in the uh, crypto world and blockchain world. And here he is super, super early um, announcing this project. And this is it. It's like two dudes and an investor. Okay, so <laughs> that's it. For something that's so far away. Um, the reason I bring this up is because apparently this thing's getting crazy hype um, in China right now because of um, the guy running it. He has a very successful track record and people are just really, really excited about it. So anyhow, go check out press.1. That is the website, press.one. Um, if, if not only to play with the stars in the background, because honestly, guys, this is cool. I won't lie. Like, I don't know what template this is, but I want it. I, I need to reamp, uh, my King of Do website. Stuff like this is awesome. <laughs> so if you know how to do this, or you can connect me to some type of, uh, application where it's nice and easy cut and paste i don't have all the time in the world but i need to update my site i know it's not mobile friendly right now something's wrong with it so i need to get to work on that it is on my list of things to do it is on my roadmap i will do it i'm more likely to do it while watching football games uh come september um uh american football for you uh international people um so yeah just uh, hang tight on the website, guys. I know it needs a little help. All right, moving on. Um, interesting news uh, in Russia. So this one's pretty interesting. And I um, was really fascinated by this article. Because essentially, um, Russia's huge. And so there's like different governing bodies that kind of govern the different regions and things like that. And I'm not super savvy with it all. I don't live in Russia. But um, my understanding is that in some of the outlying regions, um, specifically near Estonia, uh, the, the local government of that region is essentially asking the central government to allow them to start accepting Bitcoin and things like that uh, to, to basically legalize it. 
The reason being is because uh, Bitcoin's like crazy popular in the neighboring countries. And a lot of people come over the border, right? Just naturally come over to visit, to go on vacation, and it's just in the area. Um, and uh, they basically are acknowledging the fact that this Bitcoin thing is gaining crazy fast adoption. Uh, the people actually understand how to use it and want to use it. And so uh, they're trying to uh, figure out a way to legalize it and start supporting it. Um, it would be really, really fascinating if this got approved. You could almost look at this as a way for Putin to essentially test out uh, very quietly on, on some, you know, far away regions of Russia, um, out really far away from uh, Moscow, things like that. Does Bitcoin have the potential to um, work in all of Russia, right? Is it going to work? That's the question that he may look to answer with this. As you guys know, he's been talking to Vitalik. Um, he talked to him about a month ago, had a meeting with him, discussing about blockchain technology and cryptocurrency and how it can impact his economy. And um, let's just say Putin is well aware of this technology. Can't say the same for too many other uh, leaders out there, um, or at least we, I don't hear about it. I'd love to hear about it. If, if you ever run across that, please share a link or a comment about what you've heard um, in regards to specific countries and the leadership there um, because, uh, you know, that's definitely something I try to pay a lot of attention to. I believe that right now one of the core reasons Bitcoin isn't seeing a massive drop in price is really that, that pressure in Korea right now from potential um, the potential bill to legalize it, things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, one less than 1% of the world uses Bitcoin, guys. I still have never done an actual transaction using Bitcoin before, guys. So um, I want to. It's just I probably live in the part of the world where it's the, you know, it's the last thing on people's minds, uh, you know. So anyhow, um, exciting stuff happening in Russia. Uh, I'll be uh, looking for a follow-up on this one and bring it to you guys uh, if we ever find out what happened to the specific request, they made a specific request to uh, legalize it. And so we'll see. And um, they're hoping that'll help booster their economy. Like they honestly think it's that big of a deal. So last, uh, not last, but um, the Corian platform. The Corian platform um, is very, very interesting. Um, massive team. Kind of a sketchy website, though. Um, here you can join the uh, crowd cell and the ICO. And um, it looks, looks pretty interesting. Uh, you guys might want to go check out this one in particular, Corian IO. And I'm not sure I'm not if I'm pronouncing that right. But I'm um, trying to remember here um, because I lost my notes on this one. Um, this one actually is starting very, very soon, just in a few hours here. Um, basically, um, they're trying to make it so that... I don't know how to put it, guys. It's like it's been done before. It's like just another wallet just another you know new cryptocurrency they're trying really hard to focus on hey we're gonna take it to the masses um you know this is this is gonna be for everyone and, and i have tons of red flags on this one i'll be i'll be honest with you and this is one of the biggest red flags and when i go down and i look at the ico benefits i i look at this and it's like crypto market cap projection for the next five years and it's like this little cheesy infographic, and it's like, you're going to make all this money. Yay. Um, between the uh, sketchy site um, and just some quirky things, like they want to peg it to the U.S. dollar. Um, so they're going to peg it to the U.S. dollar, and then they're going to reward people using gamification 
uh, I like how they're using the bu buzzwords here, but gamification um, concepts to get people to basically um, go to the exchanges and say whether the price is above or below one US dollar. Sorry, I'm yawning there. Whew. But um, yeah, this one's very interesting. Um, I think it's worth taking a look at but I see a lot of red flags here and I hope that um, you guys will um, look at it through your own lens and not just through mine um, the the white paper is uh, unique I'm waiting for it to load here um, I have flipped through the white paper and uh, I it's it's very I don't know it's kind of bland in a way uh, they they do try to do a good job of um, explaining some of the details of what it is they're doing, um, but when I look at it, every time I look at it, I just feel like it's been done before. It's been done before, um, and so for me, it's not something that I'm I'm super interested in. But I thought that you guys might want to know because it's just one of the many ICOs that are popping out within literally. The next day or so um, this one literally being in a few hours so by the time you watch this it may already be live um, but this one in particular um, pretty straightforward business model like this type of stuff is really interesting um, when they do these kind of things when they start spouting off like the crypto markets as a whole and I don't know it just it's very uh, very buzzy. I don't like the buzzwords. I don't like the uh, the way that they're going about sharing the information. Um, the roadmap is even just a little bit, I don't know, a little bit cheesy um, in the concept. You know, it's, I don't know, after you've seen a lot, a lot of white papers, guys, you start getting critical about them a little bit. And uh, maybe that's not fair. You know, I like to believe that a lot of these guys are trying their hardest and they want to be honest. Uh, but for this one in particular, uh, I'm just not quite sure because it just seems like another cryptocurrency, another wallet. Um, and the only difference is, is that they're trying to peg to the U.S. dollar. It's like they're trying to replace the tether, but they want to be a worldwide currency. So why peg it to the dollar? Oh man, I am so sorry I'm yawning guys. I um, am so tired, <laughs> but I'm here. I'm doing it. I'm doing it guys. Uh, bringing in the news. So um, I did not find, um, unless I missed it, I did not actually find out um, how to fund this one in particular. Um, it, it appears to just be USD straight up. Um, I'm actually not quite sure. Let me jump over to FAQ. How can I buy? Um, decide what you want to buy. Okay, so you can pay with Bitcoin, Ether, or Classic, which is fantastic. Um, and that's actually the unique thing that you guys want to pay attention to on this, is that they plan on launching this. This is supposed to be the whole reason why it's a big deal. This is supposed to be like, um, our savior cryptocurrency they're putting it on uh, ethereum classic so there is the punchline the the sinker for you on this one so you can pay with it i think it's fascinating for something that's going to be based on you know uh, ethereum classic and be running on the classic uh, blockchain uh, someone was actually asking me about that in comments whether or not uh, we would see uh, people developing on that soon um, and it looks like it's much sooner than I predicted so I'll eat my own words there um, and say these guys are looking to do it and get started on it right away um, but yeah essentially um, they believe that the Ethereum Classic is a big thumbs up that it's the true decentralized smart contract platform um, so we'll just have to uh, wait and see what happens with this one uh, it, it's kind of weird. It's just, I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't fill, fill the void for me. There's no niche that it, that it really has. It's a, it's a, it's a U.S. tether of sorts running on an Ethereum classic. And I just don't get it, but I'd love to hear your comments on it. What you think about it. 
maybe it maybe it does something for you maybe it gets your juices going for another reason but that's just my take last but not least um well i shouldn't say the least um because the irs always takes the most i tell you what guys the amount of my taxes have gone up this year is unbelievable um i've had multiple letters come in the mail for basically everything in my life going up um either in interest rates they're raising or um you know just it's unbelievable it's unbelievable but anyhow irs is making a ton of money and the irs is trying to get at coinbase as you guys know um and that's been going on for a while and there's some news out of that that's really important since most of you probably use coinbase in america so listen closely um coinbase essentially has been fighting against the irs and uh you know congress hasn't really liked um the irs's request to basically look at everything right so like they just want full access to everything in Coinbase. Every single transaction, everything, they want to know everything, right? Well, Congress said, well, eh, screw you guys, that's way too much information, you can't do that. That's a little overboard, you can't just ask for everything. So, they've been um, fighting back and forth and they've been able to narrow it down. And essentially, um, now the fight is more specific. They are going to fight to get access specifically to uh, any transactions greater than 20,000 USD. Um, so it's going to be a single transaction. It could be a buy. It could be a sell. It could be a send or a receive. That is really, really good news, probably for 99% of the users on Coinbase, if not all of them. Um, as you guys know, they cap. A lot of the transactions amount like that you can do um, usually they only remove those caps if you're like a true accredited investor or you work for some investment firm so good news for the for the individuals here in America um, because the IRS just wants to get at everything and tax everything and um, they just need to they just need to put their nose into their own business and kind of get out of the way um I, i'm really really glad that coinbase as much as uh they have some troubles and challenges in the past and some people don't like them they're fighting really really hard on our behalf and uh, so i gotta give them some props you know you don't have to love everything about them or their platform you don't even have to use them but to at least take a moment and thank those guys for um, fighting and continuing to fight. Um, the uh, the government is going to continue to sink its claws into Coinbase. It's not going to stop. They will eventually get something for some really dumb reason, uh, probably terrorism or something. They'll make something up, and it'll be really unfortunate when they do. Uh, but, you know... For now, for now, we have some good news. So I wanted to end it with some good news for you guys out there, um, and that's it. So a lot of ICOs coming up. Uh, covered uh, Shirtly, if that's how you pronounce it. We covered InsureX. We inc covered Press One. We uh, covered Corian. Um, so many ICOs. Uh, we also covered uh, the Russia news, and uh, last we covered that Coinbase news with the IRS. And so. Um, even though there, uh, there's not much news going on and there are a lot of new ICOs going on, um, I'm still here to bring you uh, what's going on. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you come back. I have plenty of videos to go check out on my channel. So if you want to subscribe and head on over, or go watch some more videos. Uh, also, give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Leave a comment down below about anything. If you have a question for me or about the channel or about any of the ICOs, uh, maybe it's a question just about anything in general, in cryptocurrency or blockchain. Uh, I have a wonderful community that watches this channel. Uh, they will be happy to answer your questions. So don't be shy. Join the party. And uh, make sure you head on over to Steemit as well. Uh, if you uh, haven't signed up for Steemit, Make sure you sign up and follow me over there as well. It's a fantastic website that's just like Reddit. And uh, I, know I, I know I always suggest it at the end of my videos, but I really enjoy it over there because I learn so much. There are some brilliant people over there 
that understand this stuff much better than I do, and I'm learning a lot from them. And so if you want to continue to learn more about blockchain technology and cryptocurrency, I think it's one of the best places on the internet to go right now. Because let's be honest, guys, if you go over to, to Reddit right now and you look up the cryptocurrency Reddit, um, uh, crypto news, you go to any of the um, actual coins like Ethereum, you're going to see, what, 25% minimum. Uh, sometimes I see 75% of nothing but people talking about the price, talking about if it's going to go up, if it's going to go down, just people just uh, screaming oh, their opinions um, and people voting based on what they believe. Uh, there's not much news to be found there anymore. Um, and even if it is, it's often questionable if it's credible or not. So um, head over to Steam it. They have um, quite a few. In fact, their most popular uh, sub steemits are essentially uh, blockchain related. And uh, so go over there and you'll learn a ton. So that's why I, that's why I talk about it so much, guys. It has nothing to do with the, the monetary side of it. it. has everything to do with it's like this is actually benefiting my life. I'm actually getting an education out of it. I'm getting value out of the platform. Um, so for me, I think it's great. So that's where I'm coming from on that. Anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you guys had a great weekend and, um, I will see you all tomorrow. And until then, I am the King of Dew and may the force be with you.